Okay. Uh, hi everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Online Meetup. Today we have a presentation by Sladen Nunes. He is one of our uh, community bridge uh, mentors who was working on uh, JCASC developer tools, in particular Visual Studio Code plugin and uh, YAML uh, configuration validation. So today he will present his work, uh, show the demo, and then we will have a lot of time uh, to discuss the project uh, and ask questions. Um, if you have uh, want to ask anything, uh, there is a chat, um, and just ask in the Zoom chat, and uh, we will be asking uh, sliding uh, these questions after this presentation. So that's it from me, and Sladen, uh, the floor is yours. Yeah, okay. So, hello everyone, I'm Sladen. Uh, I'm an undergraduate student from Mumbai University here in India, and I've been a student with Jenkins. Um, as a part of the Community Bridge Initiative. And the main aim of my project was to work on the Jenkins configuration as code development tools. So my mentor for the project was Tim, um, and he helped me a lot in the project, so shout out to him. Uh, okay, so I guess basically I can just dive into the project from the start, and then we can maybe um, go on to questions later on. So if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat, and we can discuss them later. So I would begin by starting out as to what the project is about. So the main aim of the project was to enable Jenkins developers to validate the YAML files that were written for a Jenkins for Jenkins via JCASC. So if you're familiar with configuration as code, uh, the basis of it is to be able to configure your Jenkins via a YAML file. So using that YAML file, you can load in into JCASC a basic uh, configuration, which then can be applied to your instance. So we sought to make life easier for those users by developing a plugin so that they can, while writing the YAML file, do not face difficulties. I mean, that is basically we are so used to programming that maybe we encounter certain problems while coding. I mean, using auto completion or maybe getting red lines onto the editor so that we know that, Hey, there's something wrong with our file. So we plan to bring this feature into Jenkins configuration as code so that when developers write in their own YAML files, they are very, very comfortable and they can um, go out of the box and just uh, write, write stuff and it makes it a seamless experience. So, so that was part of my project. So what we did, we went and uh, made some sort of changes to the configuration, gener the schema generation, so that the schema was previously being generated by a set of scripts, which we um, rewrote in Java so that it made maintainability and modularity um, out of the box so that we could uh, I mean, make it easier for us to debug or test. So that was part one. That was part one of the project. And uh, by the end of phase one, we had the schema developed and it was time to make the lives of developers a lot more easier. Here comes in the plugin that we wrote for Jenkins configuration as code. So you can find the, the so uh, before I go into the repository, I would like to tell the users more about what we thought while developing the plugin. So basically we went and developed the plugin um, so that it pulls in your latest schema file from your Jenkins instance. And then using that schema file, it could, it helps you in auto completion and validation. So uh, all of the red lines and all of the auto completion features come in with IntelliSense. Uh, I mean, in uh, VS Code, so there is no separate language server developed, but uh, it helps us uh, write those YAML files. So I would like to show you the repository for uh, the extension. So this is the Jenkins configuration as code extension. Um, this is the source code. I mean, if I would come into how to contribute later, but if at all you want to, uh, I will be publishing these slides later. So if you need any links or any um, any sort of documentation resources that that would be made available later. So this is the entire um, source code repository. And uh, we have the documentation which explicitly teaches the users how to use it. Um, the user guide, I mean, some basic schema and what are the features that it provides how to run the script local, how to run the plugin locally and uh, some screenshots. And um, I mean, which, which tell you more about the plugin and how to get it activated. So, okay. After coming, after finishing with the source code, we come to the, the meat of it. Uh, yeah. So this is the marketplace for visual studio code. I mean, this is the place where you download. I mean, obviously you can download the 
plugins inbuilt from your um, from your VS Code editor. But if at all you wanted to visit the plugin site, you can do that. So this is the plugin site. It's called the Jcast uh, plugin. Um, you can, I mean, you can see the same thing that it's been basically pulled from the repository. So you can find any sort of documentation, resources, any, I mean, if you want to install it locally, the number of downloads and stuff, the latest release as well. So this is the place you want to be if you want to read more about the official plugin um, development. So, yeah. So moving on to that, um, what is the plugin? Do I think I've already explained to you what the plugin does? Um, basically, doesn't need you to um, doesn't need you to explicitly configure anything apart from a certain uh, username token and a URL. And you can find the plugin here. So I've already showed you the VS Code marketplace and um, where exactly can you find all of the documentation necessary? Okay, so I think um, if, I think we have enough of uh, documentation and enough of resources here to begin with the entire uh, with the entire purpose of this online meetup. That is the demo. So I guess I can take you straight into it. But before that, I guess one of the prerequisites you need to have is a Jenkins instance running. So, so what I have done is just spun up a basic, um, I mean, basic Jenkins instance. So with all of the uh, most commonly used plugins, so uh, nothing much fancy here, just basically cloned it. And I mean, cloned. I'm sorry, just downloaded the var file and just ran the instance. So you can do that on your instance as well. And with the new schema generation, um, if you have the Jenkins configuration as cloud plugin, you can go into configuration as code and you can have a look at the new JSON schema. So here it is. So this is my schema. If I can, I mean, I'm not going to scroll down, but yeah, this is the entire schema. So if you have your instance, you can check this out. This is your schema file from which in, uh, VS code will use this to generate uh, most of the uh, auto completion. So yeah, let's get right into it then. So with all of this setup, you could just jump into your editor. Okay. And uh, so one of the steps would be, first of all, is to obviously have the Jenkins plugin. So yeah, I'll just, so for demo purposes, I would um, install the plugin. Yeah. I mean, you can reload your uh, uh, file. Uh, I mean, your uh, VS Code instance. Yeah, but that's uh, not required here, I guess. Okay, I'm moving on. So I would just follow in with the guide so that if at all you're using, if at all you don't refer to this video anytime in the future, you can just refer to the how to use. So what you need basically is inside the settings tab of VS Code, you find in the plugin. So I'll show you how to do that. So you're going to file, you go into preferences, you go into settings, and then you search for Jenkins configuration as code. Yeah. So it should, I mean, apart if you have any other VS Code plugin from Jenkins, they should show up first. So if you have the matrix authorization or you have any sort of authorization configured, it will ask you for a username and a token. But for the purposes of this demo, I have entered uh, the basic boilerplate, uh, I mean, uh, configuration user token. If at all you, it, it demands for a user token. So if at all you have one configured, you can, um, um, I mean, you can enter it here. We are working on making this use experience a bit more seamless, um, which I will discuss later. So that's in the future scope. So what you do is basically just pull in your, um, you can go back here. Okay. Yeah. So just get in your local host URL. So just copy paste that here and you're good to go after that. So yeah, the next step would be to use, uh, to, um, activate the extension. So on, uh, on my Ubuntu, so I can use control shift and P that would open up the entire, um, I mean the extension list. Um, which I want to access, uh, access. So Jenkins fetch configuration as code schema shows right up because I've recently used it. If at all, it doesn't show up. You can definitely go ahead and type it. Yeah. So this probably loads in the configuration. You might see a progress bar to your bottom left, uh, which will show you the extension getting activated and that would load in. I mean, you give it a couple of seconds and, uh, that should, that should probably give you um, the Jenkins, the JCAS schema. So if you go into your working directory, you will notice an entire, uh, JCAS schema being pulled. So the plugin, I won't go into the, uh, details since it's a more of a hands-on demo, but if at all, any of the users are concerned with this, you will have a JCAS schema dot JSON generated. And, uh, if you want to know more about it, you can, uh, visit the editor. I mean the settings dot JSON 
which will automatically pull in the um, that that is that is uh, used to I mean detect dot yml file. So if at all you want to change that configuration, I mean if you want it to detect some sort of any other file, I mean uh, you can use that as well. But for the purposes of this demo and since JCast supports YML, we have this uh, already put in. So yeah. So yeah. So I can begin with the demo. Okay. So first of all, um, just give me a second. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to uh, I would be putting headings into the demo. I mean the headings into the YAML file as to what I'm going to be showing you, so that you know what um, what features does the plugin provide you out of the box? So I would like to begin with the first part that is the correct use of integers. And, uh, so I would like to type it out so that if at all, I'm going to share, I mean, you can, when you're referring to this video, it makes it easier for you. So configuration, um, uh, correct documents, the correct use of integers. Okay. Use of integers. Yeah. Okay, so let's begin. So if you hit Control P, you might. Oh, one second. Oh my God, that's the terminal. Sorry for that. Okay, yeah. So if you go on right here, you can see uh, Jenkins, and if you hit Control P, you can get all of the um, all of the sort of um, I mean subcategories that you can configure. So for this, I've chosen num number of executors. So if you check it out, you can have number of executors. So here, if I don't know what number of executors there is, and I just enter hello world, it will tell me, hey, that's not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting an integer. So yeah, that would immediately throw up an error. So you can say, okay, yeah, uh, number of executors should be three. Okay, so I'm moving on to system message. So hit control P again, system message. And now, hey, I don't know, maybe I just type in four for some reason. And it says, hey, no, you can't do that. That's not allowed you, I'm, I'm, expect, I'm expecting a string here. So yeah, so that would give you the hello world. Uh, and for example, you might get confused with the SCM recount try, and maybe I don't know what that is. And maybe I just enter some random uh, string value, whatever, and then it just tells me, hey, no, that's not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting an integer. So yeah, that you can enter. And uh, one of the things, one of the most important ones here is the um, the use of enumerations. So as a normal user, if at all, I don't know what mode is, I might be tempted to enter something like, um, hey, uh, I mean mode, something like here. And uh, it immediately throws us an error, hey, value is not accepted. Your valid values are normal and exclusive. So the configuration, the plugin automatically tells you that they aren't allowed. And it also may tell you in certain instances what kind of values are allowed if they are enumeration. So in this case, my mode is normal or exclusive. Any other value won't be accepted. So it saves you time writing this YAML file. So you can go in with normal and then yay. The, the, the plugin will tell you, hey, everything's fine. Okay, so I would like the next part I would like to demo is the use of documentation. Now this feature is not entirely flawless uh, because we have been working on uh, uh, making documentation more available to the users that there are certain instances where um, it isn't well documented. So certain parts of your code might not have documentation and you might not know what each and every of those values mean, but Hey, we have tried it um, so far. And uh, this part tells us about um, more about how can you learn more about what um, configuration to use. So just forgive me for the spellings. <laughs> the documentation. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So if you go into security and you go into API token, so it should give us, yeah, here it is. So this should give us creation of legacy token enabled. So yeah, it tells you more about uh, what it is, uh, what legacy token is, what new API, to, what, what it accepts and more about how the developer has written more about it. So if you go to see, you can have it for usage statistics enabled or token generation on creation or any of this sort. Now, let me tell you, there's a disclaimer here that this isn't completely flawless. There are certain times where you may not get this feature, but we have tried our utmost best at including it wherever possible or where there is an open issue in JCAS to be able to include more of this so that uh, we can, I mean, get this more out of the box so that users can know, um, I mean, what, what to, uh, what, what are they writing exactly and what each, um, what each sub configuration does mean. 
so yeah this would this would demonstrate uh, more of the documentation aspect of it um, i've chosen this you can choose you can while writing your files if you don't get documentation you can open up an issue and we will look into it okay so for the purposes of this demo these are the two main uses of it i mean uh, since there isn't uh, i mean explicitly any use case which we would like to demo but uh, what we were trying to overcome is the nesting of um, nesting of uh, configuration so that has been well achieved here and here so you can enter whatever is your value so for the purpose of this demo i have chosen um uh, the git scm plugin so one of the most common use cases um for for it i mean most used plugin configuration and i wanted to take you through how you can write um a configuration file using this i mean i've not cleared the above but you can definitely i mean write a new file from uh, from scratch so yeah you can join into me so if i was a developer and i wanted to write maybe a configuration file for the git scm i would just jump into it directly and um just begin i mean so so yeah so as a developer maybe i know that there is one option okay sorry for that um yeah uh, there is a something called as unclassified so hey so that it tells me okay unclassified and now i i would like to choose what is the next value so i realize okay i need get scm so yeah get scm oh hey yeah so that shows me get scm and uh, now i would like to know what other fields i can configure under it so uh, if you if you were probably writing the yaml file before this plugin was developed you would probably have to look up the documentation or look up the demo but hey we've solved all of that so no hands <laughs> so yeah basically you can use the global config email and uh, enter your email and then you can okay so after entering the email you say hey i need uh, maybe a global configuration name and yeah that, that there it is so yeah i mean you can enter that so there isn't any regex search here so just for purposes of this demo and uh, okay so then i realize create account based on email now if maybe if i don't know what the value is and i enter something mm, yes and then i realize no hey i mean it requires a boolean so yeah so yeah that would accept it i mean yeah is something wrong it's okay yeah and uh, if i wanted any other use case such as uh, use existing uh, account with email and it would tell me i need a boolean again so yeah so you can just enter that or false or whatever so yeah that would probably give you um, the entire git scm configuration right out of the box and hey so it's validated and you load it into your jcas and boom you have a running jenkins instance and uh, that saves us a lot of time i mean rather than re reloading it again and again so yeah so this was the entire um, demo section i mean where i take in some um, files and i've written it out um yeah so this was basically the entire um, the entire i mean meat of the demo if you could say uh, that is about it but um, moving on from that i mean i would like to tell users about what's next for the plugin but uh, just before i get into what's next for the plugin i would like to tell users how they could basically contribute to this plugin so i would be including links in the online meet in the meet uh, i mean in the uh slide deck and i would be publishing the slide deck so you can have a look at it later on um but yeah this is the um the vs code extension uh, source code and basically you can open any of the issues here we have some um good first issues um you can search them we haven't any um i mean we have we don't have a lot of issues here but if at all you have any feature requests or any sort of um, issues that you would like to raise feel free to just jump in and open a new issue and we'll uh, definitely look into it and uh, so this is how we would love to accept we would love to uh, see some pull requests from you on some of the most uh, desired features for this plugin um we have our uh, github channel as well which will be linked into the online meetup sites you can jump in there and i mean ask questions request for features and we would definitely look into it uh, apart from that um i mean just before i jump into this this is more of a open discussion but uh, i included a what's next for the plugin um so we wanted to address some of the existing issues and bugs that we have with the plugin like so it doesn't provide some user feedback on certain cases and uh, there was uh, a common configuration for reuse by other vs code plugin open and we could be were having a, a look at this so this is uh, i mean this is the direction we want to take the plugin into and it's more of an open focus on new features i mean if at all we could um, develop some sort of an interface where we can where users don't have to configure their settings again and again for different vs code plugin uh, we would be working on that um, 
so if at all you have any idea suggestions feel free to join in the gitter chat or feel free to um i mean feel free to open issues um apart from that what's next on the plugin is more of a community discussion um love to hear from you and um uh, thanks for uh, yeah listening to my demo uh, so i would give the stage back to oleg uh, thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, yep. It was uh, really interesting. So one comment mostly for the record that uh, we apparently got a duplication of meetings. So we had something like 15 to 20 people uh, stranded at another call with the same URL. And basically we were unable to do anything with that. Uh, so we will be publishing uh, the recording of this meetup and uh, we will do a recap if needed. So my apologies to everyone who was affected. Uh, yeah, sorry for this uh, part. <laughs> but, yeah, it happens. Uh, yeah, so let's go to the presentation. Yeah, I think it was a really, really good feature, um, and uh, thanks a lot to Sladen for his work. As you said in the beginning, sorry. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> yeah, as I we said in the beginning, it was our first experiment with community bridge uh, mentorship. So just to explain, uh, Jenkins uh, gets funding, and we facilitate funding. Uh, through donations and uh, we used uh, this money to run a, a project on our own and uh, I think that it worked pretty well so we hope to keep doing it so and yeah thanks Sladen for all your hard work it's not only uh, related uh, to Gcast uh, Sladen also helped us uh, to set up some things for Google Summer of Code uh, for plugin documentation migration and for many other areas so yeah uh, thanks a lot for all your contributions. Uh, the, uh, unfortunately, Tim Jacob uh, is also on another call, so uh, he's unable to join. Uh, but yeah, maybe we could uh, get a follow up from him later. Uh, meanwhile, does anybody have any questions about the presentation, about the features uh, created by Sladen? So we can uh, discuss uh, these features and uh, answer questions. If you want to ask something, you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask. Anyone? Okay, then I'll ask a question. Uh, so, uh, regarding the current implementation, are there any limitations uh, users should be aware of? Um, I guess apart from um, apart from nesting, uh, in certain cases there are uh, a few areas to expand upon. I mean, there is um, there is some issues with the nesting of schema. So, if you are probably, uh, um, I mean, if you are probably writing a uh, a configuration file and you realize that under unclassified there's a git scm and there's a there's a global config email and maybe there are a few more nested fields you might not get uh, the autocomplete feature for that because we haven't been able to completely perfect uh, the nesting of the schema because it requires a lot of um, a lot of um, i mean generation issues i mean with the with respect to the nesting so i mean if there are some there is, if the schema is very very nested you might fail you might run into issues uh, that you might not get the autocomplete or validation feature. I mean, with IntelliSense might not just recognize uh, the nesting of the schema and might not give you the feedback that you require. So that would be one limitation. And I mean, the other limitation is the documentation. So if you're expecting uh, the schema to throw up documentation for every single configuration file that you write, uh, you might be disappointed to see that it isn't included because that is that is an area that we found out via development that there isn't enough documentation for uh, the part of the fields. I mean, so we have we have open issues regarding the same. So we have we have been working on them, and uh, probably in some time, maybe when we have that feature rolled out, you might have documentation for each and every uh, configuration field that you write in JCAS. So yeah, that's the those are the only two limitations. I mean, limitations that are uh, currently affecting you writing schemas. Okay. Mm, so if somebody hits any other limitations, what would be the best way to report issues? Yeah, so the best way, if you have any other limitations, the best way to report issues is on um, the 
the jcas qs code extension i mean the source code repository or if you aren't much of um, i mean if you aren't comfortable with uh, reporting issues here you can definitely drop into our github chat so uh, if once i publish these slides you can definitely look into our github chat just hop in there ask questions uh, report issues throw up uh, throw up any i mean anything that you want to know about it or want to uh, contribute or whatever feel free to jump in we would love your contribution um, so yeah that's that's the best way i mean to get involved with the plugin development if you have any more new ideas you can definitely uh, post it on the jenkins developers group or even come to come visit our github chat we would be really excited to meet you yeah uh, for uh, for the future we can have uh, more features for example uh, yeah there generates some specification which is generated is just the first step and it can be consumed not only by jcask plugin for visual studio code by but by other plugins or maybe somebody would like to create an online service which validates the configs maybe as a part of the jenkins instance so uh, there is still a lot of opportunities to contribute if you're interested in such topics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? If no, I think we could uh, close down the meetup shortly. Are you thinking about uh, doing a second uh, presentation about uh, read-only system configurations? So the feature which was just released in this weekly, but yeah, since uh, Team Jacob uh, also is unable to connect to the call, uh, we will have to postpone it to the next meetup. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining this session and we are sorry for all the technical issues. I hope uh, looking forward to see you at the next meetups and we will make sure that uh, everything works well. Yep. <laughs> Thank you everyone for attending and listening. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you, Oleg, for hosting the meeting as well. <laughs> Happy to do that. Okay. Thanks all. Yep. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>